Hi guys, I'm back again today with another reaction video and today we're reacting to what happens if Yellowstone blows up tomorrow. Let's cross fingers, not tomorrow please, right? But before we do start, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, click that bell button to get notified whenever I do upload a video. Anyways guys, let's check this out. I don't think I've known about Yellowstone till I was like 20... Five probably or 26 I don't remember when I learned about it but I don't think we've learned that in school at all over here like um, during history class or geography class we didn't learn about that or maybe I wasn't paying attention I don't remember but let's see this video is made possible by Skillshare the first 1,000 people who follow the link down Geographically, the United States... He wanted to give us an ad, and we didn't even get paid for that ad, but... Fine. If you wanna get Skillshare, go for it. ...states has to be one of the most beautiful countries in the world. Mm. From the Grand Canyon, to the Rocky Mountains, to the beaches on two of the world's oceans and beyond. The list just goes on and on. Beautiful. There's so many beautiful parts of the United States that the country established its own National Park Service back in 1916 in an effort to help maintain and protect them. And in total, the service is now in charge of 63 of these protected areas and when combined together, they cover an area of 85 million square kilometers. Damn. Which is roughly the same size as... America is huge. Like, if you think about it, it's a huge country. Damn. Like, that's why you guys are driving everywhere. Because it's just so big. It's the entire country that's of Germany. That's what she said, I One guess. of the most famous of these U.S. <laughs> national parks is Yellowstone. It's located in the northwestern corner of the state of Wyoming with some overlap in Montana and Idaho and it covers roughly 9,000 square kilometers of land. Yellowstone is well known for its abundance of wildlife and its many geothermal features. Particularly Old Faithful, a geyser that regularly blasts water 50 full meters into the air approximately every 90 minutes. Oh, wow. Over 4 million people visit the park to take in all of these sites every year. But Yellowstone is harboring a dangerous secret. It's okay, located no, no. just atop a slowly ticking time bomb. The largest supervolcano, not only on the North American continent, but also world? anywhere on the planet right now. And it has a bit of a troubled past. You see, the Yellowstone caldera that we know today was actually formed by several titanic volcanic eruptions that took place a long, long time ago. One of them took place 2.1 million years ago, oh. another that took place 1.3 million years ago, and the most recent taking place approximately 664,000 years ago. So where are we now? Because it like this is the present day, if you can see, right? This is the present day. Look on the screen. And then we have the last one at 664,000 years ago. So where is the... Is it right here, right now? I mean it's here we are here right now so when is the next eruption <laughs> are we scared right now probably we should right oh, long before homo sapiens had ever arisen over in africa the last of those that surrounds the yellowstone lake ended up ejecting so much material during the blast that it left a 55 by 80 kilometer depression in the ground that we now know today oh. as the current yellowstone caldera and each of these three colossal events is what is known geologically as a super eruption. Meaning that on the Volcano Explosivity Index, they would all be listed as a magnitude 8 or higher. And at a minimum, at least 1,000 cubic kilometers of material was ejected during the most recent oh, blast. Um, which ooh. is, well, I the just, material was ejected. I just saw this, Pinatubo. This is Philippines. That was 83, eight, what, 91? Oh, gosh. During the most recent blast, which is, well, insane to comprehend. Oh, my God, that's because all. Because that would basically be enough volcanic ash, lava, and wow. other material to bury the entire state of Texas 
one and a half meters deep. Oh. If we look at the geological history of Earth, we know that on average, the planet suffers from one of these supervolcanic blasts roughly once every 100,000 years. The most recent such occurrence was the New Zealand Lake Topo volcano, which blew up approximately 26,500 years ago. Oh. But by looking at the history of the Yellowstone eruption specifically, a disturbing pattern begins to look like it's emerging. The second most recent explosion took place about 800,000 years after the third most recent, okay. while the most recent one happened about 636,000 so like years four after that now? one. And as mentioned previously, this most recent event happened 664,000 years ago, okay. which is 28,000 years longer than the time between these two most recent explosions. This is one of the biggest reasons why Yellowstone in particular often receives so much attention in the global press. However, experts and scientists have repeatedly assured the public that an eruption at Yellowstone any time in the near future is exceedingly unlikely, and oh. the volcano's current... Unlikely? Whew! Okay, thank God. Because I was like... <laughs> Are they gonna say is most likely or unlikely? But unlikely, I like to hear that, because that is scary. Right? That is crazy. Any time in the near future is exceedingly unlikely, and the volcano's current status is dormant. Based on over 30 years worth of research, the evidence gathered suggests that while, yeah, it's theoretically possible, a mega eruption isn't likely to happen any time within the next 10,000 years. Keep in mind that on the geologic timeline, it took roughly 800,000 years between event number 3 and event 2, which is 136,000 years longer that's than we've gone now since event 1. But that's not really any fun. If Yellowstone defied all of the odds and blew up today anyway... Did he just say that's not the... Oh, the what? That's not fun or something? ...than years longer than we've gone now since event 1. But that's not really any fun. That's not any really fun, or however he worded it. So he's trying to say that's not the fun part. We're going to the fun part. Is there a fun part about this? <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> if Yellowstone defied all of the odds and blew up today anyway, how bad would it actually be? Let's do some speculation. Okay. The whole Yellowstone volcanic system itself is huge. Like, it's way bigger than you probably think it is. For example, the magma chamber that lies underneath the national park today is estimated to be a single connected chamber that is 60 kilometers long, 29 kilometers wide, and 8 kilometers Excuse deep, me? and holds an absolutely absurd amount of molten lava. This chamber is fed by a gigantic plume of molten rock that wells up from hundreds of miles beneath the Earth's surface. And fascinatingly... Oh my god, it's so crazy. Fascinating is the right word. It's so fascinating how we're just like, like I, I'm not sure we are, but some people are walking underneath this lava that is just about to explode, that might explode, depending where you are in the world, right? I mean, we don't know what we are walking underneath, to be fair. Damn, the world is mysterious, huh? As this magma rises up into the chamber and cools, the ground above will periodically rise and fall. And because of this, the elevation of ground within the Yellowstone Park will fluctuate up or down by a few inches a year. Oh. Now, before any massive eruption would take place, it would very likely be preceded by a huge amount of seismic activity. Basically a warning sign that something really bad was about to happen. I'm glad there's a Many warning sign. Many seismologists estimate that there could be substantial earthquakes preceding any blast at Yellowstone that would last for weeks or even months beforehand as rock below gets broken up by magma as it surges further and further up towards the surface. Here, pressure would continue building and building and building and with increasing intensity until, with nowhere left to go, the magma would explode through the ground in a cataclysmic eruption with debris getting flung as high as 24 kilometers up into the stratosphere. 
four Shortly kilometers. Shortly afterwards, the lava flows themselves would engulf the surrounding area, and anywhere inside a range of 65 kilometers from the epicenter would be in danger of becoming literally buried in lava, mm -hmm. which is basically the entire territory of the national park itself. Beyond this immediate danger of burning, the blast would eject a thousand cubic kilometers of material up into the sky, creating a type of umbrella cloud expanding evenly in all directions and darkening the sky. Oh my god, it's going, it's covering the whole United States. Skies over most of the North American continent. This and North America, would rain right? Down I mean, toxic volcanic ash even across the it entire might get to South America, to be fair. Inland United States, Wyoming, Idaho, Colorado, Montana, and Utah will, however, experience the most significant devastation and will probably be almost completely buried Ooh. with up to a meter thick of hot volcanic ash. Denver, Salt Lake City, and Boise will be severely damaged or just outright destroyed. Meanwhile, across the Midwest, Nevada, and Southern Alberta, there would still be inches of ash coating everything in sight. Even the Atlantic and Pacific coasts would likely see a small dusting, although much of it would be highly dependent on the time of year and weather patterns involved. Mm. Basically, if you're looking at this map, everything in blue would be completely wiped out. Everything in purple would be highly damaged. Everything in orange would be sort of damaged. And everything oh in yellow would be mildly damaged. The North American continent would take a pretty significant bruise. Mm. But the worst part of all of this would obviously be the terrible toll that it would take on human life. True. With a full meter of ash possibly being poured down oh, upon you okay. and your city, even if you are not close enough to see the volcano, it could still possibly kill not only you, but also plants, animals, and even crush buildings with the sheer weight of dense ash deposits. Oh. Even just a few inches of ash can come. This is very. Um, I'm sorry. This is very informative. Like. I don't think I've learned any of this in school, so, you know, this is a very educational video. Ash deposits. Even just a few inches of ash can completely ruin farmland, clog up roadways, mm. and create serious respiratory issues for large amounts of the population. Not to mention that it would take out key oh, infrastructure, yeah. contaminate water supplies, down power lines, prevent nearly all air travel on the entire continent, and even take out electrical transformers, which would bring America's power grid to a complete and utter halt. What could be even worse you is that the bang, ash would oh. likely wipe out the entire Midwest's crop of corn and soybeans, and could even poison the farmland for an entire generation. This would make food production within the United States... This is like starting over i don't know how yeah i don't know how a continent a, a, a country will have to how do you call this regenerate everything else after this like he said it's gonna take years severely crippled, and America would likely have to rely on food imports from other continents in order to survive. Yeah. But beyond the absolute chaos going on across North America, a volcanic eruption this big would also have a major impact on the global climate and affect everybody who lives on this planet. In of course. How Especially in America. Like, it's happening in America. So, all the world is going to be affected. A lot of businesses will shut down the rest of the world because like most businesses like branch out to the states, right? Or US branch out to uh, us. Like for example, our BPOs, like the call centers, they are mostly based in the Philippines or India. So if America doesn't have, like they shut down all those companies, then we would suffer economically as well. Oh my God. Like, why haven't I thought about this, right? Am I just living under a rock or something? How to get more views. How to attract. In some way, 
You see, volcanoes can emit sulfur aerosols that are capable of reflecting sunlight back away from the Earth. I didn't even think about this. I didn't even think about the scientific part of it. I was thinking economically, but I wasn't thinking scientifically. Which, which causes I the don't climate know. to cool down. For example, most recently, when Mount Pintabu erupted in the Philippines. Pintabu? That is wrong, actually. It's Pina. He forgot the A. But, anyways, yeah, it erupted. In 1991. Very it's estimated recent. that it cooled the planet by an entire one degree for Damn. at least a few years. And that's not to mention the Great Tambora eruption, which occurred in Indonesia in 1815. Asia is crazy. That eruption, which was rated as a category seven on the explosivity index, Gosh. is believed to have cooled the planet enough to damage crops around the world, potentially even causing several severe famines in certain areas. There was even snowfall Whoa. during the month of June in the eastern half of the United States that oh. year as it became known as the year without a summer. These eruptions, however, were oh. relatively tiny events when compared to what a supervolcanic Yellowstone eruption might look like. Although it's hard to say with any kind of certainty, scientists estimate that with the amount of material that would be ejected into the atmosphere, the planet might cool by as much as 10 full degrees for an entire decade oh following gosh. a cataclysmic eruption at Yellowstone. Obviously, a change in the climate that huge would cause a global catastrophe as crops around the world would be affected, yeah. likely endangering the lives of hundreds of millions of people and doing untold amounts of damage. FEMA, the U Can greenhouse help or it's pointless? I don't know. We are fudged. But I think we can be saved because I don't know if this is the place wherein they uh, conserve plants. I don't know what it's called, okay? I don't know the words and the names of these things, but they get like plants and they put them in this like very secure place so that uh, if something happens to our uh livelihoods we have like stuff to start regrowing things again plants and all that stuff i don't know how i'm explaining this sounds like a two-year-old u.s federal emergency management agency even published a rough estimate on what it thought the total damage cost to the united states would be in the event that yellowstone ever actually blew in that report they estimated that it would cause roughly $3 trillion in damages, or almost 14% of the entire United States GDP. Uh oh. So, yeah, Yellowstone blowing up like this would be really, really bad for everybody. Mm. But it's more than likely not gonna actually happen during any of our lifetimes, unless one of you becomes immortal. <laughs> Because if you look at the frequency of the last three big eruptions, the odds of one happening in any given year are roughly 0.0001%, which is actually lower than the odds of civilization getting wiped out by an asteroid. So oh. this isn't really a... It's like, don't worry about Yellowstone, right? We might probably die uh, sooner by asteroids rather than... Okay, thank you, guy, for making it better yeah i feel so much better right now problem that you have to worry too much about right now but maybe there's another problem or challenge that you are facing right now a, a for COVID? a big personal goal or a passion project that you've been really excited to start but you're not quite sure that you have the skills required to Skill do it share. just yet one of the most common questions that I get asked by people is how to get started creating Yeah, that is uh, his ads uh, for his video. So if you want to check the original video, it's going to be in the uh, description. But anyways, that was very interesting, very um, educational and eye-opening. I didn't know about this. Like Yellowstone just, okay, uh, like I just <clears throat> heard about it through YouTube videos and yeah. And I was like, you know what, I really want to know more about it. And here we are. We got some information. Um, I don't know how to feel. Like, obviously, it's scary because we don't know exactly when it's going to erupt. But thankfully, the scientists are giving us an estimate, which I think we can trust, right? Their scientific research. 
and uh, yeah I don't know what else to say let me know what other videos you like me to do react to if you like this video don't forget to give this video a thumbs up subscribe if you haven't already leave in the comment section down below what other videos you like to react to the original link of this video will be in the description box down below so that's my social media link so guys I'll see you in the next video bye